Hello and welcome, my name is Xander. I will be your instructor through this tutorial. Now this tutorial is actually part of a whole course which you can access the first stages for free here on YouTube. Now in this tutorial, I might mention resources and other tutorials. Do check out the link in the video description which will take you to the playlist and also there will be a link to the resources so that you can access and follow along here on YouTube. Now, if you like this course, you found it useful and you want to take that next step, you can find this course over at Udemy. All the links to the resources can be found in the video description. Now, don't forget also subscribe to the channel for weekly promotions, discounts and free course giveaways. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to back up and restore a Postgres SQL database. There are three types of backups that you might want to create when working with a Postgres database. The first and what we're going to perform in this tutorial, a logical backup. So a logical backup creates a copy of the database in a human readable SQL format. It extracts the database objects, tables, schemas, indexes, anything that we select and stores them in a file that can be restored later. In this tutorial, we're going to use the PG dump tool to generate an SQL file or compatible file so that we can then use that to restore it to our database. And this can be ideal for small to medium sized databases. Choosing the right backup strategy is going to be critical. The disadvantages of using a logical backup using or creating a backup using the PG dump tool is that it can be slow for large databases and it doesn't necessarily capture ongoing transactions it only takes a snapshot at the time of the backup the second type of backup you might want to create is a physical backup this is a direct copy of the database files at the operating system level so you're going to capture everything here including indexes and transaction locks for that we have the pg underscore base backup tool to help us copy the entire database directory we are going to require file system level access and this is best suited for maybe large databases and replication setups so this is going to help you restore data quickly it supports point in time recovery PITR which can restore data up to a specific moment and it's good for replication so this can be used for setting up replica databases as it says here some of the disadvantages of this is it is not necessarily very portable and we do potentially require the backup to be restored on the same Postgres SQL version and then last of all, we have continuous archiving wall. So right ahead login. So continuous archiving allows Postgres SQL to store transaction logs or wall logs, which record every database change. And this enables us to create that point in time recovery, PITR. How this works is that wall logs store every transaction before committing it to the database so by archiving these logs you can roll back to any point in time to use this you will need to enable wall archiving in your postgres sql config file and this is used mainly for high availability setups and crash recovery the advantages of something like this is that it ensures minimal data loss in case of failure uh, it can restore your database at or to any point in time. You just need to be careful with this because your wall files can consume significant space and you will need to configure this properly. So it is a little bit more complex to set up than the other backup options we have here in this list. So to summarize here, if you need a quick and simple setup, use PG dump. If you need a fast recovery and full backups, use PG base backup. And then if you need that real time backup and point in time recovery, start to think about using wall archiving. As we get deeper into the course, I need to remember to keep reminding myself to remind you uh, at the start of the tutorial, the setup that we're currently using, because we have multiple Docker setups now that we can utilize for different tutorials. So we're going to start from the beginning here. So first of all, let's go Docker Compose 
and then we're going to use the docker uh, compose with a database data let me just uh move that across so you can see the entirety and then we're going to use up and then the d flag <clears throat> up and then the d flag there we go right so that's the container started that will give us access if you remember to the data in our local folder here so we're going to manually log in to the container so let's use that so we move into the container let's log in as our postgres user and then let's access our inventory database this is the database that we're going to use to back up some data and now we can go ahead and create all the tables we'll do this manually now we will learn later how to automate this process but let's go ahead and paste that in so all the tables have been now created and then we need some data so if we go back to the previous tutorial where we loaded data from csv i have loaded that up so you should be able to copy and paste that in so this should load in the data we don't need to load in all the data for all the tables really we're just I think we're going to back up just a single table here but nevertheless that is now done so we added some data let's just check so select all from the category table and we have data don't forget if you do have the more here that means obviously there's more rows for us to see you have to keep pressing enter until we get to the end or else you can press on the mac control c or alternatively on windows there would be another key combination to finish or to close that list right so let's take a look at now backing up data right so we're going to be using the pg dump tool which is a Postgres SQL utility that we can use to back up, like I said, small to medium sized databases. So we are logged into our database. So let's use the PG dump tool. And now we need to work through the different options. So first of all, we specify the user. We want to run this feature or this utility, sorry. And then we can specify if we need to the actual host. So here we're going to use localhost because we are logged into the Postgres uh, database. This command can be used um, externally from the database. Here we are using this command specifically while logged in to our database on our host machine. So here we specified the user and in this case the host. And if we needed to connect to our database further, we could potentially select or use the port number as well sorry define the port number so that's the port number of which our postgres database is working on and data will be passed to that port and then we'll be able to access the postgres service right so now we need to specify the format of the backup there's a few different formats we can choose from custom format compressed and restorable via the pg restore ideally for simplicity we would choose that option we have a directory format plain text SQL format for readable SQL files. So we'll output a readable SQL file or a tar format so to create a tar file. Right, so I'm going to specify F and then C, and that's the format we're going to be using. Or at least we'll start with this C option, this custom format option, and then we'll take a look at the different option in a while once we've worked out some of the drawbacks of using this. And now we can select or use the, the B flag. So here we ensure that large objects like blobs, such as images, if we are using any or PDFs and any other binary data are included in the backup. So if your database stores files or media, this flag ensures that they will also be backed up. Right, then I can use the V. This is for verbose mode. This prints out detailed output or prints detailed output about what's happening during the backup process. It just helps troubleshoot issues if something goes wrong. And then we can specify the file path. So F and then we need to specify where we're going to save this backup file. So I'm going to call this one backup uh, file. And I'm going to use the file extension of dump dump so that's the file path where we're going to save the backup file and the file format so it's going to be a dot dump file now if you don't specify a path i think that 
it will be saved in your current directory wherever you run this command. Then last of all, we're going to be backing up the inventory database. So we specify the database name. Now, of course, if we don't include this, we won't know what database to back up. And if you do have a database name that contains special characters, wrap it in double quotes. Right, so let's give this a go. Press enter. And I probably need a semicolon. Hey, there we go. So it looks like I've got a problem. Now, apologies if you have already got annoyed at me for saying this, but maybe you have already worked out what the problem is here. The PG dump utility provided by Postgres SQL is not an SQL command. It's a utility that we're going to call from the command line, but from our machine rather than the actual uh, SQL terminal here. So this is why we need to connect to the database or specify the information to connect to it first. So this is typically done outside of PSQL, our Postgres terminal. So let's exit that. That takes us back to our container machine, command prompt. And from there, we can run the command. So if you need to check your commands, they are in the, the file connected to this tutorial, of course. So I'm just going to copy that, that back in now. Give that a go. And there we go. So we have some additional information because we have the verbose mode on so we can see what's happening. So you can read through that. And it looks like we have dumped the contents of all of the tables. Right, so let's take a look at see what we have created. Remember, we did ask for it to be saved in our DB data folder. And it's right here. Now I did mention that we used the F flag, the capital F flag with the C format, and that was the custom Postgres format. So this is a compressed and restorable file via PG restore, but we can't actually access what is probably the binary code in this file. So we can't actually inspect it to see um, what we have just created there. So if you need that, you simply just need to change the file format. If you want to inspect the code or be able to inspect the code, then simply use the different approach of when we select the F, the capital F to specify the backup file format, simply select the P option. Remember the P option is for plain text SQL format. So let's uh, give that a go. And uh, let's, uh, let's call this, let's change this slightly because last was called backup file. So let's call this backup file. Uh, text. So I changed the name of the file extension to SQL as well. I run that and we create our SQL file. But this time you can see it is in plain text and we can go ahead and read all the SQL, which corresponds to recreating all of our tables and resources in our inventory database. That includes the tables and further at the bottom here, that will also then include the data. Right, so let's see if we can restore this data. Let's remove, first of all, in Docker Desktop, in containers. Let's just delete all of our existing containers. We're going to recreate them. Now it's getting a little bit more complicated with all these different Docker Compose files, and I haven't necessarily named them in the most coherent way. But let's run Docker Compose and use the F to specify the Docker compose with database data that's what we're looking for that will give us access to the data folder so that we can access the backup file in our container right so we use the up and the d flag as per usual that will bring up our containers right so we now have the containers uh, we now need to run our command which is going to be the pg restore command to actually restore the data now i did mention i think briefly that if we make a backup using the custom C flag, then we will be able to utilize the PG restore to actually restore from that file. If you did make a an SQL file using the format uh, P, plain text so we can inspect the data, then you can simply just copy and paste that data in that file into the Postgres SQL terminal, and that should then restore all the data. So let's just work through this option here 
to use PG Restore and to restore from our dump file. Right, so we're going to need to log into our database. So Docker exec, let's uh, move into it. So we're now inside of our Docker container running in Docker. And then we can now run our PG Restore. So the command here, there's not much to talk about here, I don't think, because we've covered most of this. So we need to connect to the database using select defining the user, the host. So this, in this case, we use localhost because we're running the command on the local machine, which also hosts the database. And then we define port 5432, which is the default port where Postgres is listening for any connections. And then we specify the, the database and the file. So that should hopefully restore everything. It looks like we have successfully restored. I did mention we also using the V flag here to output this information to give us more information about the, the process. So we can read through that, check for any errors. So at this point, we can probably now go ahead and log in to our database and use the DT to now hopefully see all of the tables that were created but that hasn't worked necessarily and the reason why that hasn't worked is because we've not selected the database right so we need to select the database we want to inspect and then we can see the tables just double check there is data so select all from let's go for category and we can see that we have also restored the data so if that gives you a starting point to think about backing up your data here, we use the utility tools provided by Postgres SQL to create a backup of our database. We've seen that we can back up in different formats and we've seen how to restore using the Postgres utility or potentially you can simply just copy and paste the SQL that's generated if you use the SQL format.